For the students in our audience today, the best and most exciting parts of your career lie ahead of you. In this audience, we have leaders of the future. In science, technology, business, management, engineering, the arts, education, even video gaming. Whether or not your aspiration is to be a leader, or it's to pursue a career based on your interests, thinking about leadership is incredibly valuable, about helping us make choices and about helping us make decisions. Now, in my world of research and teaching, I work most of the time with very senior global business executives. And these are very experienced people. And so when we're going to have a conversation about leadership, I like to show them a picture, and it's this one. It's a picture of a large forest. And in this forest are lots of pathways. Some of the pathways are rock, some are stone, some are sand, some are grass. Some of the pathways are paved, some crisscross. Some get to one point and split off in five different directions. But there are pathways everywhere. Some of the pathways are easy to pass. Some of the pathways are harder. Some get blocked. And I use this picture to start a conversation about one of the most important insights on leadership that I know. And that is that leadership is a journey, not a destination. We never actually arrive at being the very best leader that we can be. We are trying to aspire to be that, but we never actually get there. The journey continues. And throughout our lives and throughout our careers, we're making decisions about a new job, a new geography, a new country to work in, maybe a different company, maybe a different organization, maybe a different career choice. Every time we make those decisions, we are on a new pathway. And this journey of leadership is so incredible. And the key thing that I found in my research is that many leaders do not think seriously about the new pathways they're on when they make a career change. They take their strengths of the past that help them go along a particular career path, and they take it into the current pathway, even if the skills don't match. Let me give you an example of John, a very senior operating executive that I worked with. And John was an exceptional leader manager in crisis situations. So there was a crisis. He would head the crisis project team. He would take action to solve the crisis. And in a crisis situation, Having directive, authoritative leadership is an appropriate leadership approach. He was clear. He was precise. He energized the people who were in his team to solve the crisis and solve the problem. And he was very good at this. Command, control, directive leadership in a crisis situation. Well, John was so well recognized in his company that later on he was given a promotion he was asked to go and take over the business unit leadership of his company's operation in another country. Now, this was a steady state with growth opportunity business area. He was going into a very different pathway. But he didn't think that. John tells me that when he arrived, he was feeling pretty good about himself. He'd got a big promotion based on his career track record. He'd arrived in this situation. There wasn't a crisis. So he started to create them. He'd been used to issuing command and control. He said that was successful in the past. That's how I'll lead and manage. 12 months later, he gets his performance feedback from the people who he's leading and directing. And it's very clear. You're a micromanaging authoritarian dictator who never listens, never consults. Your crisis style is not right for this pathway. And the first insight is to think about the pathways that you will be traveling on throughout your career. So how I'm going to suggest we work on this in this discussion is to think about the world we will be leading and managing in. This is a world of tremendous opportunity with change, but it's also got some challenges. In the post-Cold War era, the world was described as VUCA. Volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous. This was a term the military developed to describe leading and managing in a world of uncertainty, 
with geopolitical uncertainty. Well, I will argue that we add two more letters to this for the 21st century of the leadership environment of today and tomorrow. The first is a D at the end, and this stands for diversity, because we will never lead and manage with more diversity than we have now. Gender diversity, cross-cultural diversity, and perhaps most importantly, intergenerational diversity. A diversity across at least three to four generations that will be working together in every workplace of the planet over the coming decades. But then I'm going to put a D at the front, a big red D, for the word disruption. Because we live in an era where traditional businesses, industries and ideas are subject to disruption and change. And so for the leaders and managers of today and tomorrow, the key is how do I navigate? How do I make sense? How do I make meaning in a world that is disruptive, volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous, and needs to engage diversity? Now, everyone in this room has caught a commercial airline flight at some stage. Now, if you catch an airline flight, the FAA says maximum altitude is around 50,000 feet, normal cruising altitude around 35,000 feet. This is Felix Baumgartner. He's an Austrian skydiver. 2012, he's in a capsule at 127,000 feet above the ground. And he's going to do something that's really crazy. He's going to dive out of this and fly down to Earth. This is the largest and highest skydive through the altitudes in human history. And he goes extremely fast. Well, Baumgartner travels down and ultimately in his spacesuit, then protected by the parachute as he arrives on Earth. So, think about altitudes and the ability to go up and down in them. We've often flown in planes from takeoff to higher altitudes and then down, and now translate this to leadership. And so that brings us to the concept of leadership altitudes. Now, this idea starts with research work from the distinguished author Ram Sharan, one of the most brilliant advisors to chief executive officers around the world for many decades. And Ram, working in then in research with our research team, we looked at were there altitudes of different levels that leaders needed to perform at to succeed? And we found that was the case. So what are these leadership altitudes? Let's put three of them in place. And these three are 50,000 feet, 50 feet, and five feet. Just three altitudes. And what we discovered in our research was that effective business leaders have the great capacity to think at these three different altitudes and not get trapped at any one of them. They can go up and down easily between three entirely different modes of thinking. So what are they? 50,000 feet thinking is big picture and vision. It sees the outside world, the unstoppable trends of change, technology, disruption, socioeconomic change, organizational change. It sees possibility in that disruption. It understands customers, markets, but it sees from the outside in and the future back. It sees the big picture. And, as, and the leader thinking at this level is able to create a vision and then connect it down to action, which happens at the 50 feet level. The tactical level, the on the ground, the day to day, the week by week, short term goals, implementation, execution, planning, activities, things that we are within the game field, where we communicate with our networks inside and outside the organization. And then, very importantly, the ability to connect that to thinking at the five feet level, which is the self. To be profoundly understanding of ourself and the micro details we need to take care of, and be able to connect ourselves healthily from the ground up to the tactical level at 50 feet, and then understand what that means for being a big picture leader at 50,000 feet. And this is crucial. What we have found is that leaders who can effectively navigate across all three of these levels and be conscious of this 
where they think, they act, and they communicate are leaders who are extremely effective. So 50,000 feet leaders, there are many. And there are many leaders who are capable of connecting all three across. Two examples, Warren Buffett of Berkshire Hathaway, Gail Kelly, former CEO of Westpac Bank in Australia. Each able to easily connect big strategy choices, either in financial services or insurance or investment, connected down to the day-to-day -day execution and implementation activities that are required to get results and a healthy sense of self-awareness. And there are leaders who, in traveling across these altitudes, produce remarkable things at particular altitudes. If you think about the value of 50,000 foot thinking, change, risk taking, new opportunities, technology, just think of the incredible 50,000 foot thinking of a leader like Elon Musk. Electric vehicles, space. But it's not just modern leaders. Go back more than a century and think about a leader in their field who imagined the possibilities of radiation and scientifically examined this and then brought it down to the 50 feet specific experiments that Madame Curie did and ultimately won a Nobel Prize. At the 50 foot level, where we're bringing things into the tactics of the field, leaders like Larry Bossidy, the legendary CEO, former of Honeywell, whose book, Execution, The Discipline of Getting Things Done, talks about connecting the day-to-day -day with understanding the big picture, purpose, and vision of the future, but very importantly, with building the talent capacities of the people inside the organization and building that not only in skills, but building it through self-awareness at the five feet level. And then there are leaders who take, there are leaders who take a five foot view of the world. And they take a very strong five foot view of the world. If you think about Chad Tung, who was one of Google's earliest engineers in their founding era, who in 2006 set up a very special program on mindfulness around, uh, around Google that has become one of the mainstays of people's development in that organization. Or I think about senior executives and CEOs from very different organizations that we work with on leadership development, people who are running infrastructure, retail, and other businesses, who are then saying, can I make sure I connect myself, my self-awareness, get feedback, reflection time, and connect that to my strengths and my talents, and then overcoming the big gaps that will hold me back from them being the best leader that I can be. The key here is working across three different altitudes and taking that. Now, in our research work, one of the most startling things about this idea of altitudes is that we discovered that more than 70% of senior executive business leaders have a really bad phenomenon. It's called altitude sickness. Okay? Serious altitude sickness. These are leaders and managers who are disproportionately trapped at one of the three levels for too much with no time at the other. Now, the biggest group we found who had altitude sickness were trapped at 50 feet. Tactical, short-term, day-to-day. They were really good at doing the same thing over and over again, but these people are very bad for themselves, their organizations, and their teams because they come resistant to change. They don't open themselves to innovation and new ideas. They become very good at competencies and skills of the past, like the leaders of Kodak, who are very good at their kind of film, not digital. 50-foot thinking, if trapped there, does not allow us to see both the opportunities and the threats of disruption and change. That's where we found most of these business leaders were trapped, and this is not a surprise. It's a comfort zone. People are well trained for this. We're remunerated and rewarded for those kind of tactical short-term results. Then we found a second largest group with altitude sickness were trapped at 50,000 feet. These people had their heads way in the clouds. These were over-dreamers. 
These were the kind of leaders who announced a vision this week. Six days later, let's have another vision. Let's do a change here, a change here, a change here, a change here, and nothing gets done. The ideas are not translated into practical reality. And it's the connection of the big ideas and the dreaming to action and reality that is the key here. As Nelson Mandela said, vision with action will change the world. Vision without action is just daydreaming. Then we found there was an even smaller group who were perhaps the most dangerous leaders of all. They were trapped at five feet. They spent a disproportionately large amount of time thinking entirely about themselves. These were the egoists, the narcissists, the absolute micromanagers. These were the people who would get in everybody's way provided it was in their self-interest. And it had even included people with mental disorders including the psychopathic leaders. So my advice is very simple, to think about leadership and your future direction. To think about leading and making sure that you practice your altitudes right from the beginning of your career. Spend some time each week thinking about the outside world, its possibilities, its changes and its trends, and what this might mean for either opportunities or threats for what you're doing. Spend time each week at 50 feet, executing, implementing, and doing. And spend time each week healthily at five feet, reflecting on who we are, what we're doing, why we're doing it, and how we can challenge ourselves to be the best leader we can be. As I said at the outset, this is a journey. It is your journey. It is not somebody else's. The leadership and career journey is an individual one and the excitement of a 21st century with its disruption, its volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity and diversity is an exciting one, but it will also be challenging. And to navigate that, we need support. The support of our own leadership and career plan, getting coaching, getting feedback, doing reflection, and very importantly, taking into this journey a set of mindsets that work across these altitudes of leadership, from the big picture to the tactical to the self. Take your passion, your mastery, and your opportunities, and may your leadership journey be a successful one. Just avoid altitude sickness. Thanks very much.